killer, but don't push me. Revenge is like the sweetest joy next to getting. Let's, let's go. Um, hopefully there's no lines in my my camera, cause I live out in the boondocks, man. Got lines in my camera, and shit. My internet sucks. But yeah, who, who gives a shit? I'm just gonna get into some real talk. You know what I'm saying? Like, old dude, uh, old dude uh, tweeted the other day. Some some damn dude. I and but I, I thought I was talking to Tuttle. I know Tuttle's first name is Dan, but it was a different Dan. I don't even know who. The, I, I was like, yeah, I, I used to, I used to, uh, I used to look at your lineups. You know what I'm saying? I used to dissect your lineups, but I never dissected your lineups, bro. I, I thought you was Tuttle. I did used to dissect Tuttle's lineup. Like I, I'm gonna get into like, like when I first started, like how I, what I did, to to come up. You know what I'm saying? To to try to learn, to learn more. Um. Those of you that know me from where I take, you know, my love for sports is deep as fuck. Like, uh, my love for sports run as deep as my kids, maybe more. I I I I, I look at it as uh. Florida State is the longest relationship of my life. Um, they will never leave me. <laughs> They're never going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? And Orlando Magic is my second longest relationship of my life. Uh, they're never going nowhere. They never leave me. They just always let me down. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm just gonna get into like why why I left Wise Tech, why why I don't play DFS no more, because people was like say they want me to come back and I mean I did the interview with Wise Tech, and I I got I mean I got more I got more views than all the rest of these motherfuckers like the that number one player looking dude that goofy looking motherfucker I don't even know his name uh, awesome something. Um, awesome or yeah. Um, that dude and, and all the rest of them. There's some big names there, but whatever. I had an advantage. I, I used to work at I used to work at Wise Tech, so I had I had a, like a, a home court advantage. But uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna get into all of it. Like, if, if you're first starting DFS, like, wh like what it is, and I'm gonna rank my 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 favorite, like my players that I looked at like I'm gonna rank my who I think the best DFS player in the world is like my top five uh just stuff like that just just some real talk but I mean we we just started off of of pretty much like I mean I'm not gonna talk about like why I got into DFS like my friend told me he's like you, you should play you should try this uh you just put players that I'm like, ah, I ain't got no time for that shit. Uh, I got a job, man. I'm, I'm, I'm working. I ain't got no time for that shit. He just kept harassing me, harassing me. I finally did it. I, I stacked Pittsburgh Steelers, and I, I turned a little bit of money into some more money. Like It was like, I don't know. I played like $10, I think. I think I put in $10. I played $10. It turned into like 100 and something, like 107 110 something like that. So I was like, shit, that was fun. So I mean I know about sports, but I I, I met Paulie at the live final, and uh, then got like I started at Wise Take, but I mean it, it it was cool. Like I I I helped change people's life. Like you know what I'm saying? Uh, we we helped like there are people to win in hundreds a hundred thousand dollars and. Fifty thousand dollars and all that, and I'm pretty sure the dude that won a hundred thousand is when it was, it, I think it was it was it was God Sob, the it was God Sob, God Sob and uh Paulie and me on the show we we did it and we was we was so in on one player, uh yeah and it was a good night and there's plenty of good nights so I mean yeah that was fun. We was a little company. We we didn't have many subscribers, and we still changing folks' lives. And people, I, there's people that's learned from me, like I learned from these folks. But anyways, the 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 reason I I, I left was like I'm I'm grinding. Like I, I'm coming to work every day. I work 
10 to 12 hours every uh, every day sometimes a little more if you count you know what I'm saying my drive and I, I, I'm also doing like wise take shows and all the research and, and everything is including putting my together my lineups and, and writing an article and all that shit so like I was I was pushing like I was doing way more than I ever should have but you know what I'm saying it was nothing I, I'm never gonna settle for you know what I'm saying I'm like I'm not trying to settle like I'm not trying to give half ass no it, it's 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 all in for me so I gave I gave you motherfuckers at wise take like I gave y'all everything like took away from my life like my kids my wife you know what I'm saying it took away from shit but I don't I would never complain that's me that's me I, I chose to do the shit you know what I'm saying and I know when I'm when I'm gonna get into something, I'm gonna be the motherfucking best. What, no matter no matter what it is, cleaning the motherfucking toilet, I'll be the best. Mo- I'll be the best toilet cleaner that there is. It, it, what, whatever the case, whatever the case is, I'm gonna try to be the best. So, you know what I'm saying? CK will tell you, Polly will tell, uh, they'll tell you like that's just what it is. So, anyways, long story short, uh, uh, my son got in an accident. A little fender bender. He, he was distraught. He called me. He needed some help. So I went to go. I, I went to him. Of course. You know what I'm saying? And uh, whatever, whatever. Blase, blase, whatever. We went through the night a lot. You know what I'm saying? Went to emergency rooms and shit. And uh, on my way home, I, I, I was driving home. The last thing I can remember is thinking about Donovan Mitchell and how... He ruined my night by not doing shit. <laughs> he ain't do he ain't do nothing, and I had a, I had a damn I had a like it was it was it was good. And Donald Mitchell ain't do shit. And then next thing I woke up, <laughs> I I was in, in I was hit a parked car. If it was over a couple feet, I'm a dead motherfucker. Like, I'm already dead. I'm dead. There's a tree right there. Big ass tree. So, yeah. I'm dead. But I hit a parked car hard. I was fucked up. My people at White say no. I missed a little time. Like, not long. You know what I'm saying? But just a, a couple days, few days. I, oh, I was, like, I was on fire. My back was on fire, so... After that, like, you know what I'm saying, I, 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 like I just told you, two, three feet over to the left, I'm, I'm hitting that tree on, uh, the driver's side, and I'm dead, so, yeah, I mean, I already knew that it was taken away from my kids, but that ain't, that ain't shit, like, once, once lock hit, like, it was all, like, I might watch the shit, but then I could go to my kids. But yeah, I, it took away from everything. So when that happened, I like, man, I can't do this. I can't, I can't do this no more. Like I, 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 I love it. I love you. I love y'all. Uh, that's why you should just subscribe right here and come over here and, 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 and tell me what you want to see. We, we could go. We could, do, we could do some shit. But um, yeah. I had to go. I couldn't do it no more. And like I, I, I'm doing like a lot. Like I'm not just doing one or two things. Like I'm doing. I'm running NASCAR. Like I, I, I'm doing golf. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing baseball. But like the main sports, all that. Like I, I didn't write no articles for football. But I just did the show. But um, I mean, I loved. I loved it all. I loved trying to help others look at it in a different light like look at their line of construction in a different way and I learned um like what else I wanted like was there something else I wanted to say um hold on and but right after I left wise take I pretty I quit like I ain't played DFS at all like there was not like I played like a a, a week of golf or golf I love, of course, I love it all, but the golf is a grind. Like I, I, I gotta 
do a lot of work to uh, really feel confident in my shit. So, um, I, I was pretty much done. I, I, I only do NASCAR. Like, I, I do the NASCAR show when I get off of work on Saturday. For Sunday, I, I do it. I mean, I don't do it uh, in depth. It's not like some long in depth thing where I'm really going in depth to the shit, but I'll give you my opinion on each driver and I'm blase, boo, like, you know what I'm saying? I give you my opinion on each driver and like you just put together what what you want from that, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, that um that that's that's bullshit, whatever. I don't mean that. So yeah. But the main reason why I stopped playing DFS though is for like I said it on my interview with CK on on, on, on uh, Wise Take. It was like you sports is like pretty much everything to me. Uh, it, it trumps so it trumps everything for me. So. When I'm watching the game and I, and it's DFS related, I I'm like I don't have you, so I need you to pass the ball to this guy that who I have, cause I need him to do things over here. Like I need you to do this for me, so I do the and and then I would never root for my team to lose, but I would root against my, my the Magic. Like no, you don't do that, T Ross. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that, T Ross, because you need to give the ball to whoever or whatever. And it makes you look at it in a whole different light. And then I, I don't want to... Like, watching sports now is so just... <sighs> uh, it's, it's just all love again. I, 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 there's, no, there's no teams. I don't give a damn what it is. It could be the bottom of the barrel teams I'm watching. But I don't have to worry about, oh, please throw it to this guy. Like, I don't care that... This is a better play for you. I need you to throw to this guy because th this is who I have. So, yeah. The, the, how I watch sport now is so much better. Uh, uh, yeah, if you making money, if you make any pro will tell you that that is doing this every day. They don't watch sports the same way they did when they watched sports as a kid. And some of some a lot like I mean not a lot but some. These dudes don't ain't never watch sports. I don't even give a sh don't even care about sports. It's just all a numbers game, which yeah, it, you, you can win. You can definitely you can definitely win just by going off numbers. But you're so much better to know the game and uh everything around the game and when you, if you played it, that's how you do that. Whatever. Uh, what else I wanted to talk about? Um. All right, we'll just go right into it. Uh, who, the the, who I learned the two guys I learned the most from. The the two guys that I would put my money like I would be like, yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna subscribe to you. I'm gonna listen to what you say. You know what I'm saying? There's two. I'm gonna tell you, and and and, and they're the, my top two players. Draft sheet. I know that he doesn't have work on no company right now, but wherever he goes. If I was new to DFS and I wanted to really learn, I'm talking about really learn, uh, Draft Sheet and Hefe, uh, Jeff L. Hefe, uh, both of them, I learned more about diff like strategy of uh, putting together lineups for tournaments and like everything just why you don't play this chalk and, and, and this chalk is like you can go with this chalk or it like there's just so much when you fade when you fade this you know what I'm saying you do this as a counteraction to that that fade like I'm fading this 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 uh super chalky value well, I'm gonna bust your head here and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go get my value somewhere else you know what I'm saying and hope that that chalk busts or it, it if a running back is coming in and you don't think that running back has a talent, you go to another running back or whatever. There's so much. There's, I think draft sheet is, first off, I think he's a genius. I think he's brilliant. His Twitter 
is the only the only notifications I get is is VCs. That's it. That's the only notification I get. And uh, the guy's just hilarious. He's a genius. And he's also very smart. Um, he taught me how to dig into pictures like no other. There is no other person on the planet Earth that I would trust more than Draft Cheat when it came to pitching. It, more than me, of course. He's I, I'm I learned everything I know by listening to him and, and everything that he looks at and just everything like the the spin rates and just everything. He just breaks it all down. There's not a person on the planet that I would trust more uh, uh, their opinion on a picture than DraftKey. Take that forever. However you want it, however you feel. I don't know. I don't know. He, I think he is number one uh, fan, fantasy player in the world. And I don't give a shit what anybody else thinks. Because that's my opinion. I think he is number one. I think Hefe is number two. And I know that Hefe also knows <laughs> Draft Cheat too. That LeBron James is a better basketball player than Michael Jordan. It's just, it's just a, it's just a fact. It's just, it's just what it is. LeBron James is a better basketball player. If I put all around everything, all everything, LeBron James, and and the thing I'll tell you is, Michael Jordan knows it. If Michael Jordan had the first pick, uh, and he could pick from any player, he could, any player. And he wasn't picking with his heart or, or with his just absolute competitiveness. You know what I'm saying? Um, if he was just picking purely on his brain and his knowledge of basketball, there's no way that Michael Jordan is picking himself over LeBron James. I don't give a damn what you say. Um, but, yeah, I just love him that he actually will say it. And I remember him saying something on Twitter. I was like, hey, you, people should listen to exactly what he just said right there because that is uh, – that is 100% correct. But Hefe is a genius as well. I mean, he's not, I wouldn't say, I mean, I know that Drashi and him are, are friends, but they're both very, very smart. All these dudes are smart that I'm that I'm going to say that's in the top five. And, and all the dudes that I used to look at their lineups, every single one of them is smart as hell. There's so many, there's so many fantastic DFS players and DFS minds all throughout so many that you don't even know of you have no clue who they are they just chilling you know what I'm saying and they putting in work and they know what the they know what it is but yeah draft cheat is number one Hefe is number two CSU Ram is number three a guy that really m most people wouldn't have in their top five because a lot of people don't even know who he is but the real good players know who he is uh mcche mcjester i got him uh four he is uh, i used to love to dissect his lineups like i never heard i never got any info from him i never heard nothing from him or nothing not not really csu ram either or notorious but i got notorious number five He's phenomenal. I mean, he's he's not as much like he's not as much of a tournament player, but he's to golf. He's for sure. But the other guys, like I used to, when I first started, like I found out who I thought was like who the lineups I needed to look at. Like, why did they get here? You know what I'm saying? Like, like. I would all, like, wherever DC was, I was trying to listen to him, wherever Hefe was, I was trying to get to what what they were saying, you know what I'm saying? But these other dudes, I would, I just want to dissect, like, how did, how did, how did Notorious get to this, what did he do to get to this dude? And why would he put him in his cash lineup? Or whatever, whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to look, like... What was everyone trying to do tonight? Like, what was the chalk? And it was different when I first got in. Like, it ain't this today. Like, with so much info out there. That's why it's so hard today. When I first got in, it was, it wasn't as much, it wasn't as much out there. So it was much easier to get ahead. Now, like, 
these dudes are telling everybody and 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 and, and they're subscribing to listen to them and they're like and they're doing what these guys is like how how they're putting together their shit they're doing the same thing using the same players and they're talking about what they really like and they're giving you everything like, they're not holding back I, DC or Hefe, I don't think it's ever ever held back uh, of what they are gonna do and what they like but all of those guys and Stevie is I used to I mean Stevie was a guy Stevie TPFL I always looked at his lineups like I already said Tuttle at the beginning of the show Tuttle was one Jeff Manns, like he, he I, I used to look at his, like he's more of a cast player. I mean, that's all he really does. And, and it was Siege too. There was one other person, but I couldn't remember who it was. I think it was like 10. But yeah, I mean, that's how, if you're first getting into the game, you could, even if you're not, like, you always should be trying to evolve every day. You should, you're trying to get better every day. All these guys is trying to get better. They're trying to come up with new strategies of to get how to get ahead and all that, but yeah, I mean, I don't even know where all of them. I mean, I know the notorious is not gone from Roto Grind. I know Stevie would never. I mean, those two I don't think will ever leave Roto Grind. I know them there, but I was gonna say Stevie is what I learned NASCAR from. Like everything I know, I learned from him. Everything like I, I got so many notes. <laughs> that came that were words that came out of his mouth you know what I'm saying and, and he just taught me like you know what I'm saying how to look at practice and just everything like he knows Stevie knows more than pretty much anybody because he knows a lot of dudes in the garage because he goes to a lot of races and you know what I'm saying he works in the media side and he he's good friends with you know what I'm saying he's good friends with Todd Dillon he, he, he knows plenty of the drivers but I he does himself a a big disservice because he gives it he gives it all to you too but yeah I mean I, I learned everything everything I know I mean I knew the sport I loved the sport my whole life I knew the sport but as far as DFS wise everything I know I learned from him and like it doesn't take long to know everything you need to know I mean. I would never say that I'm as good as Stevie, but whenever he would put out a cash line, I never played cash because I do not want to play cash in NASCAR and in cash and still lose money. No, just let me play tournaments and uh, uh, just, I can't play cash in NASCAR, dude. It's, it's, a, it's 1v1 so much, 2v2 all the time, and I just can't do it. it the lineup just builds itself. So like what I was going to say is when he put out his cash lineup, I my cash lineup was the same all the time, every time. It was only off like once or twice, and that's when that was a week when the the bills were so close that you could have went either way. Anyways, yeah, uh, go ahead and let Draft Cheat know that he's. A, I mean, I, I know that Draft Cheat would love to hear that he's the best DFS player in the world. Oh, gives a fuck what I think. That's just my opinion. I would like to know your opinion. I would love to know those dudes' opinion of who they think is the best, you know what I'm saying, DFS player in the, in the world. And I don't really care too much about the dudes that's going to max enter every single contest on the board. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to talk about like the dudes that are putting in... <laughs> I mean, not normal amount of money, but reasonable amounts of money. Not fucking, you know what I'm saying? Not maxing her in every single thing. But yeah, I mean, that's just my opinion. Like, the DFS game is hard, bruh. It's, uh, it is not easy. But you can get over there and wise take. And, like, these guys will know you personally. Like, I will trust CK and Polly. Like, after the shows, you know what I'm saying? I asked them a question. If, if they, if, you know what I'm saying? If they were confident in... I would trust their opinion just like I would trust mine's. I mean, it's just a smaller uh, company. They'll, they'll know you personally. You know what I'm saying? I love those dudes. Those are my dudes. Will always be my dudes. Um, so, yeah. What else I wanted to get into? Oh, like like the name. Like the name of my channel. I was going to name my channel something. My wife was like, nah, bro. You ain't doing that. 
So I was like, whatever, I'm going to name it F the Chalk because nobody else has that. I mean, I know it's a term for DFS, but it could be, I mean, whatever, F the Chalk. But, like, this is for people that's new to the game or, or whatever. Um, there's, there's certain points where you fade Chalk, there's certain points you don't. And, like, these dudes that I was just talking about, they'll, they'll tell you. You know what I'm saying? When they when they will fade something, but in basketball, if you're fading chalk constantly, like you're just as you're just dead, like you're just dead in the water. If you think you're gonna go into basketball and just be fading chalk constantly all over the place, you're just dead because it's chalk for a reason. E e either they're super cheap and and starting and gonna get starting minutes and so much more usage. And all that bullshit, or vice versa. They're gonna come in and start and get no usage, and that's when you, that's when you beat them. They're like, nah, I'm not gonna play this 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 chalk because this chalk has a high chance of busting. So I'm gonna go to the dude that's gonna come in behind him. They might be balling out with the second unit, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, he 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 needs he need he needs to show out because he needs playing time. So if you're always fading chalk in basketball, you just might as well just stop playing. Um, yes, there is time to fade chalk, yeah, and there is time to not, if you're playing a fucking bunch of lineups, then you're gonna, you're gonna say, am I gonna go under or over, but nobody that's just beginning is gonna be playing a 150 lineups unless they're doing it in the little tiny miniature things that they got, like it's 10 cent or 25 cent now. Um, yeah, so you, you it's just, you just fade in the guy because he's gonna be high owned. You don't fade a guy because he's gonna be high owned ever. That's just dumb. You don't ever fade a guy because he's gonna be high owned ever in anything. You look at the reasons why he's gonna bust or he, he has a chance of not doing what he's supposed to do. And all these people that played him, their lineups are gonna they're gonna be here. While your guy is balling at super low on, your lineup is just jumping like your lineup is flying up leaderboards because your guy's doing something. And their guy is just sitting on the bench watching. Um, so yeah, I mean, you always gotta you always gotta look at what's the percentage of this chant of this busting right here, or you know what I'm saying. Football, then you get a little more. There's a little more variance there. Like the quarterback is the guy that's getting the ball from the center. He's the guy that has. He's the guy that can do whatever he wants. If he wants to run every single time, is Lamar Jackson wants to. Step back and look for his first read. It's not open. Look for his second read. It's not open. He wants to run. He he can do that. But everybody else got to depend on. You know what I'm saying? What the defense is going to do? Like the running back. It, it, if you play this running back, that's super high on, and the defense is just going to stack the box all day, and he ain't really going to do nothing. And and the, and the wide receivers on that team is going to be low on because the running back is so high on. They're doing things out there. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? So, and then, like, you get into other sports, and it's even more. Like baseball. Uh, I mean, the variance is so high there. And, like, that's why with this small season that, that's about to happen, that like, you should be aggressive as hell. If I was playing uh, season-long fantasy baseball, I'd be super aggressive with my shit because the sample sizes are going to be so small. And the injury risk, like, if a dude does... Do, does something to his oblique and he misses this amount of time it's going to be so much more of the season than normal so the the sample size like if Aaron Judge goes through a two month sh little little law there a month and a half law like Gary Sanchez is a perfect example I mean fuck who, who goes in laws like Gary Sanchez he could go in a two month law where he don't do jack shit and if you got him in season long you're just hurting so yeah, I'd be super aggressive there. I'd be aggressive with my bets for the season and stuff, for, for all that, all that good stuff. Like for home runs, for steals, for strikeouts, for wins, for all that. I'd be a little more aggressive than I would be normally because the sample size is so small. But another, that was, a, that's what happens in baseball. You only get four, four at bats, five at bats. If you don't do nothing, you 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 get walked twice, you strike out once, you don't, you know what I'm saying? You pop up. You're scoring six fantasy points unless you score or, you know what I'm saying, steal a base. So, 
the, the chances of walking away with a zero in baseball is high. A guy is not going to walk away in basketball with a zero. They're going to bust, yes, but the, the chances of the zero there, that's why baseball is so much fun. And that's one of the reasons I love NASCAR because it's so variant. I mean, I, I've lost four races in a row. I didn't play one. I didn't play the first Pocono. I played the second Pocono. I've lost money four races in a row. Four, maybe even five. Hey, that's what happens. Shit happens. I, I can't. I can't help. <laughs> I can't help it that I, I got so much priest and and Planey and they getting. They're getting screwed on pit lane because the guys can't drive down pits. But anyway, um, that's just a couple things for that. Um, like, I mean, I already went to a little bit of a strategy, like, as far as if this guy, if this guy is, is going to um, be chalk and be starting in basketball, but he's going to be on the court with the starters for most of his minutes. So maybe he really ain't going to do shit except he's going to get the minutes. I mean, there's a good chance he busts, especially if he's the kind of player that likes to stand on the corner and really don't do shit, which is a good chance that's what he's going to be doing because he's going to be playing with everybody else out there. So you can fade it and, like, if, 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 there, if, there's, if there's value, like, say there's a, there's a position where there's a lot of value at and your own fan doing you got to play two of them so you fade it and you hope the them them values bust like them them two chalk values bust and you play the guys that you think is really going to go off that night at that position so while these chalk dudes really ain't doing nothing your two dudes is going ham so again while these lineups is stagnant sitting still with these guys that is high owned your lineups is just jumping, jumping, jumping. And that's how you jump to the top. I, I, I was always going for the top. Like, I was never in, in it for anything but the top. But it, the reason why it's so tough now is because there is so much information out there. And the rake is, you know what I'm saying, is going up. So the rake is going up so high. You're out. You're 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 in the waters with these with these sharks out here. These sharks these sharks is eating. These sharks is at their computer putting in work, and putting in work. While you at your job doing whatever, doing whatever, these motherfuckers putting in work. So that makes it really tough. Like I said, the rake. Um, I mean, it, it it's a tough ball game. It ain't what it what it used to be. To ask any of these pros that that been start that started from the jump, how it was back then. I mean, of course the prize pools wasn't the same, but the, the payout structures, like the payout structures nowadays, is just insane. Like you you look at these payout structures, like why am I even doing this? Like why am I doing this? If, if, if I got a chance of not even doubling my money, and I got to be in the top what percent? Like why am I doing this? That's why if you really really want to be profitable you better you better work in some cash because if you don't you're gonna have to hit and you know what I'm saying you're gonna have to hit uh so yeah w what else i want to say um hmm. but you, you can also look at what i just said on the other end and if if there's two expensive options that's going to be chalk and you think that one of those or both of those have a good probability of busting then you go ahead and try to find you a cheap option right now that you think could get somewhere close to what they're going to do if they bust so you busting head somewhere else in a different position why are you trying to keep up with that expensive chalk you feel me on that um uh like some baseball stuff like or, or, let's say football um say a, a running back is like i already kind of talked about it a running back is going to be popular you could play the, the wide receivers and hope the running back gets hurt or not gets hurt 
Uh, I would never always hurt. Number one, I might get hurt, but he busts while the, the wide receivers go off or, or whatever, whatever. But if a if a starting running if a starting running back is out and the backup running back is coming in and you think that backup running back sucks ass and you don't want to play him, you think the third string running back has more talent, or you know the third string running back has more talent. He's just third string, and this guy's gonna get the opportunity. And 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 the herd is here. You go there. And you, and you think, and you think, you're com you're pretty confident that this guy is gonna beat this guy. Why this guy's super chalk? You understand me on that? And you can do the 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 the. This is just really basic shit. If 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 you really want to get into it, like I'm like I said, you gotta follow them dudes. I was just talking about. You gotta get in. You got to learn from these guys. You got to take in what they say. And you need to start looking at how they look at things. And you need to find out, like, what kind of player you want to be for who you want to follow. Because some dudes is cash, some dudes is tournaments, but, like, DC and Hefe, they, they do, they can do both. They, 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 they're really, like, those two dudes, man, are, are just tops for me. Um, but in baseball say it's kind of a short slate and the pitching is terrible and you're on DraftKings, you got to have two pitchers. Say the pitching is just bad. It's just bad. So don't go up there and try to get some pitching that like pay at the, at the top to get some pitches. Like go to the bottom, go find you a, a long reliever. Like if you really think it, it's that bad, there should be some long relievers that day. So maybe go ahead and get that, and you try to win with bats because if you're if you're paying them for pitching and for pitching that sucks, like that's just ass backwards. That is just dumb. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and and you could even look like if if you don't really like the value options and you really need to go here with your bats, like you you have to go here with your bats, and you don't want to take none less. So you got to get some cheap pitching. Maybe you want to look at a long reliever or a closer that they're like, okay, this guy's coming in the closer day because it's going to be pretty close. And he's just going to come in the close day and he could strike out three dudes. So he strikes out three dudes at min price, no ownership, while nobody else does shit. You, you're doing good. Like the Milwaukee dude, this dude come in, he might strike out four or five if they leave him in. But he in price. But like... That's not really something you're going to do often, but there's going to be times where you're going to have slates where the pitching is just bad, and that's something that you could do. But it's something that you could do, like in the playoffs or in short slates, to try to be different if you're trying to win a donkey tournament. A donkey tournament is that low dollar shit with a ton of players, and, and the, these guys is in their 150 lineups, and then they're finding their friend, and in their 150 lineups, and they're finding their wife, and they're in the 150 lineups, and they're finding the a donkey here and a donkey there and they're in 150 lineups over here and over there nobody gives a shit about none of that but when they win that million dollars then a motherfucker then a motherfucker care <laughs> oh, like DraftKings fan dude, they don't give a shit yeah man yes put y'all's player pull together and build out 450 lineups and throw it in there it's all good because you're filling up our contests that's all the fan duel and drag kings is worried about is filling up their contest. So, yeah, like the, these dudes that is mass entering, like they're losing a lot while they're winning a lot. Like, yeah, they're going to have some big nights, of course, but they're going to go on streaks where their cores are really not going to really do none and they're going to fucking lose tons of bread. And fan duel, fan duel and draft kings is going to say, oh, here you go. Here's some entries to this or that because you always fill up our everything. You're you're everything to us because we know everything's gonna fill because of you. Um, so I mean that makes it tough, but that ain't none. To the the people that say, oh, because you build 150 lineups, you just a win, are just ignorant and stupid. So, uh, yeah, just ignorant and stupid. Just because you have 150 lines in it, don't make it easy. Believe me. Uh, believe me. It does not make it easy. Um, 
what else I want to talk about. I mean, that's pretty much it. Like you, you gotta go find what you want to be. Like you want to be a, you want to be just having fun, and you should have fun with it. And and, but if if you really want to be profitable, you gotta move up in contests. Like you're not gonna win playing two dollar and five dollar contests. Like you have to move up to you got to get up in the 30s the 30s 40 like you play a 50 dollars single entry like the 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 cash line is so much lower but the well not the cash line is not really so much lower but the top prize like the top score is lower like it's just going to be lower than in the donkey the donkey you might need in in the nba you might need 400 460 points to win that night while in the 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 100 dollars single entry you might not only need but 385, 390, 400. Way under what you're going to need in that donkey with all them lineups. It, it, if somebody got 150 lineups against your two, what's the odds of, like, what's your odds? And then you got a whole ton of motherfuckers with 150 lineups, and you're, you're running one or two. You're never going to win like that. It, yeah, you can hit. Like, I, 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 I hit a donkey, Cody Bellinger. I'm fucking blast, blast the home runs and no ownership when he first came up. I'm saying I finished second place like 50 G's, and and so, but you're not gonna be you're not gonna be winning in the long term if you're just playing nine dollar donkey tournaments. Like you gotta move up, you gotta move up in your con your your contest uh amount. Like you wanna get up instead of playing. Playing fifty dollars of little money, five dollars, ten dollars here. You just play the fifty dollars single entry, and your chances of being first place in that fifty dollars single entry are so much higher than being over here in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a tournament where these dudes is just got everything everywhere. They got they're, they're covering every base, while you're only covering your lineups. Like you only have one or two lineup, five lineup, ten lineups, whatever the case may be. So yeah, you, but you need to know like you want to play like if you're not gonna play cash, it's gonna be hard to be profitable because there these there's great players everywhere. There's so much information. Information is endless. I mean, there's there's just information everywhere. There there's this this asshole Tom Dick and Harry here and wherever just everywhere. There's information everywhere. Um. I mean that's that's pretty much it. Um, you should hit subscribe. Come over here and watch my NASCAR show. Come over here and watch whatever you want. Uh, just let me know what the hell you want to see. Um, yeah. Write a comment. Tell me who who your five, yo your, your five uh, players is, and with for the dude that said, oh yeah, I forgot. Kevin Adams followed me, bruh. Um, I was on my birthday. That was the only present I got for my birthday. I got nothing from my birthday at all. Like my first birthday ever in my life, where I didn't receive anything. Like I ain't get no, I ain't get no head. I ain't get no nothing. I ain't get nothing. Uh, so Kevin Adams followed me on my birthday. I was like, oh shit, Kevin Adams. That's my dude. Every single week, the last thing I did every single week before NFL was read Kevin Adams. I would read it. Like people go to Silva, which I respect Silva, of course. But for me, give me Kevin Adams. Uh, and when he followed me, I'm like, what the fuck is Kevin Adams following me for? He must have seen that shit when old dude said, uh, if if I if dude asked if you were starting a top uh, a, a top site, who would be your num who would be your first dude? And dude said Cash and DFS. Dude was like, this damn dude was like, hmm, how <laughs> never heard of that motherfucker. I mean, I'm gonna give him a follow and see what he say. I like, hey, bro, too late for that, dog. Because I damn near hit a motherfucking tree for this shit. And motherfucker, I got four kids, bro. Like I'm trying to raise my kids to try to be here as long as I can for them. So why I love the hell out you, motherfuckers. That's why you should come over here for me, like, and hit subscribe. Tell me what you want to see. I I love you, motherfuckers. I love you to death. But I just can't do it. Like I can't do it. My kids, my kid. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't do that to my kids. So it's all love, but I can't do it. So
for all my all my folks, especially my 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 folks that that's that's down for real, like that's right there. You right here with me, like my my first hundred subscribers, man. I love y'all. For, for for the next subscribers, let's go. Like I, I, my next goal is a thousand. Can I get some subscribers? Can you hit subscribe for me one time? I don't even know what the fuck I was just talking about before. I was talking about that. I don't even know. But yeah, hit subscribe for me one time. For all my folks at Wise Take. For the big D's and the jaws and the donuts and the cavemen's. For all that shit. I, I mean, I, I I should do some shows, but how can I do how can I do an NBA show without playing the night that night before and you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm i I'm still watching. Believe that. But I can't. I, I I could come on there and talk and be an asshole like I am, but I can't go on there and give out information. Like, I'm not trying to give out half-ass information. Not never. Everything I ever gave, I believed in it wholeheartedly, 100%. Like, I gave you everything. I damn near gave you my life, and I, I put that on everything. I never, ever, 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 ever would ever tell you something that I didn't believe in. Never. That never happened. And I can promise you one thing. That wouldn't happen at... At Wise State. You know what I'm saying? It just wouldn't happen. So, that, I mean, I, I've heard some shit that, that other people, like, really don't give a, f like, they could care less. You know what I'm saying? Folks that actually is giving out information, they could really, they could just throw out some, just some random shit, like, at the end of the show and just be like, who cares? <laughs> Who, who, at the end of the day, who really cares? I'm not going to play it. Somebody might play it, and maybe they might get lucky. And really, it's really going to have no chance of doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? I, I never. I, yeah, I would, I would, if there was some low on shit, like it was going to be really low on, I was like, I really believe that it could do something. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I never, ever, ever thought about that from DC or Hefe and I, I, listen, I listen to a lot of Jeff Manns too and uh, I don't think Jeff Manns ever held anything back like I don't think not never and he's he's really smart especially in NFL like I think Jeff Manns is super smart in NFL for sure if, if I was building cash like I would want to listen to what he has to say uh, I definitely respect Jeff Mann's NFL and especially his cash. Uh, there's just so much, man. Th there's so many people out there that's so good at this. So if you're coming in here just thinking you're just going to get rich, like it just ain't going to happen. Unless you just got a lot of money behind yourself already. Like you coming into the game and, and you know something and you listening. You got your, your ear to the streets like, uh, and you listening and you just got a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? You coming in with money. Then yeah, do your thing. You you could definitely do your thing. But if you coming in here playing four dollars at, at lineups and, and against a hundred thousand people, hey man, may may you get struck by lightning because that's what you're gonna need. May like you gonna need you gonna need some help. So yeah, I mean I'm pretty much out here. I I love you. Uh, hit subscribe. I I, I could use it. Go tell DC. I, I would love to. I would love. I would love, go tell DC that somebody thinks he's the best damn DFS player in the world. <laughs> I fucking love you, DC. You are a genius, bro. Your tweets be having me rolling, bro. As and 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 the fact that, like, really you can't. You really don't get really as many people as you used to, but they get, just get pissed, and then you just start retweeting and ah. Uh, you're just a genius, man. You're a genius, bro. You're a genius. The the your insight of what you gave me of on pictures is, and it's just not just that, like NBA and and and, and just man, I'm telling you, DC and Hefe taught me so much about this uh this 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 tournament game that 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 you're playing and that you call DFS. Uh. So yeah, uh, I mean we out here.
hit subscribe I love you Ah, <laughs> uh, and Tommy G done lost his motherfucking mind, huh? Forgot about that. Uh, we out this bitch.